Let's talk about using the Universal Control application for creating low latency monitor mixes with third-party DAWs. Now, first off, it's worth mentioning that before we had the blazing fast speeds of Thunderbolt and interfaces such as the Quantum and Quantum 2 that could take advantage of that connection and give us incredibly low round-trip latencies, we had another workflow, which was using low latency mixers built into software applications, such as this one over here. And it's worth mentioning that although these types of applications were introduced as a solution for a problem, which was the latency that was incurred when monitoring through software monitoring, there's still a very viable option for today and still very powerful. And I happen to know a lot of people who still prefer to work like this. So let's take a look at using universal control in conjunction with Pro Tools. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this gear icon. Let's go ahead and make our ADAT inputs available. You'll notice that as soon as we make our ADAT inputs available, we have a lot of different channels that we can manage. So this would essentially allow us to manage a 26 channel session. So we could have our eight built-in mic or line inputs the first two being instrument as well. Then we have two banks of ADAT. So we have ADATs one to eight, and then we have ADATs nine through 16. So essentially, if you thought about this in terms of bringing in an input for every channel you have, this is a lot of channels that we can manage. So let's take a quick moment to discuss the concepts here. Well, as we know from a previous video, anytime we click one of these tabs over here, if I click this main tab, this would be the mix for the main outs. If I click mix one, two, this would be the mix for my line outs one, two, mix three, four would be line outs three, four, five, six would be five, six, seven and eight would be seven, eight and so on and so forth. So essentially we have the potential to create a lot of different mixes. Now it's worth mentioning that when we click our main fader here, we can adjust our headphone routing. We have two built-in headphone amps on the Studio 192, and we have one in the Studio 192 mobile. We can route the headphone source of either one of these headphones directly to a set of outputs. So in this example, I have all these different outputs that I can choose to route my headphones. Now I'm gonna be listening to the main mix. So essentially, we're only gonna to have to deal with one mix for this. So let's go into our DAW, which in this case is Pro Tools. And you can see that I have created some channels over here. And I've essentially created channels for the first eight analog inputs. And in addition to that, I have two SPDFs and all of my ADATs. So let's just take one microphone over here and let's use my voiceover mic, which is currently routed to input three in universal control. Now, if we go ahead into Pro Tools here, and I was to go ahead and record enable this track, which is mic three, keep in mind we have our playback engine set to 1024. Let's see what happens. Check, check. Okay. So you can see that we're listening to the main input that's coming through universal control. But in addition to that, we're also listening to the DAW output that's being routed with our hardware buffer of 1024. Hence, we're getting this latency, this slapback, and it's very hard to record this way. Let's just go ahead and deselect this for now. In Pro Tools, we have a way that we can combat this, and that is by heading to our Options tab and engaging this low latency monitoring. So let's go ahead, let's re-engage this track over here. We'll head to Options, and we'll engage low latency monitoring. Now you see, as soon as we engage low latency monitoring, that the outputs that were coming out of the Master 1 which represents my main outs, they've disappeared. That's because essentially what's happening is Pro Tools is cutting off that output. So now what we're able to do is we're able to manage our headphone and our monitoring levels directly from within the universal control application. So now I'm listening to my main outs and I could even go back to Pro Tools over here. Let's just switch our windows up. Let's go back a little bit and let's engage recording. So now I'm recording a track it's going through input three. I'm recording in Pro Tools, but I'm actually doing all of my monitoring through the universal control application. Now, if I head back into Pro Tools and I go ahead and stop this, now I'm back to monitoring my main track. Now, because of the way that I have things set up, if I was to press play, you're going to be hearing playback on this audio right over here. And this will allow me to play back this track over here 
in our DAW playback, I will hear it, but because I still have my universal control application and this fader is up, I'll be able to listen to both of these. So let's go back to Pro Tools, press play. So now I'm recording check, a track. Check, check It's check. going through input three. I'm recording in Pro Tools. So the idea here is quite simple. We can set our system playback buffer a little bit higher and we can be doing all of our monitoring in terms of our input monitoring. We're doing that through universal control. We're listening to the main outs and keep in mind at any given point in time, the DAW return, DAW one over here, this is what's bringing in the Pro Tools stream. So if I go ahead and play this, let's keep our eye on universal control. So now I'm recording a track. It's going through input three. I'm re if I mute the DAW playback, then obviously we're not hearing it. Application. Now, into Pro Tools and I go ahead and stop this. So the idea here is quite simple. We want to disable any software monitoring that we have in our DAW. So this is having a look at it in Pro Tools. Let's go ahead right now and let's have a quick look at Logic Pro. This is very similar, but it's a little more easy when it comes to Logic Pro. So in Logic, we have the option, let's go ahead and open up our preferences. If we're in our devices here, Persona Studio 192, our IO buffer size is set to 1024. We have the option within general to enable or disable software monitoring. Now you'll notice I also have it mapped up up here. We can go ahead, right click, customize our control bar, and we can make in under modes and functions, we can make software monitoring visible up top over here. I find that very useful. So now if I have this track, input enabled and record enabled. By default, most people would leave software monitoring on. So, so now we're, we're hearing, hearing that delay again, because, because we're hearing the universal control input in terms of my live mic, and we're also hearing the DAW output. But if we go back into logic and we disable software monitoring, now we're only hearing our input. And of course we can go ahead, we can record some material in logic over here and I will be listening to my input through universal control on the input side. But if I needed to go ahead and do any punch-ins, I could come back, let's wind back to the top. Maybe we'll play from somewhere about here. I can engage play and I could essentially drop in to do a punch-in and we will hear both. So this makes it very usable in terms of doing punch-ins, but through universal control on the input side. And then I can come in here to do my punch-in and then I can drop out or just push stop wherever I need to. So I'm able to hear both of these and I can do that very, very easily simply by disabling our software monitoring option in Logic or the DAW and then we're listening to our live input. Now it's worth mentioning that this is also possible in Studio One. So let's go ahead, we're gonna boot up Studio One and although Studio One doesn't have an option per se to disable software monitoring, it does kind of have a backdoor approach in terms of how to do this. So we have a track over here. Let's go ahead, just make sure we're set to Studio 192. And I've got the same amount of inputs brought up. What I wanna do is talk about how we can do this in Studio One. Now in Studio One, we currently have our audio device, our device block size set to 1024 meaning that if I was to monitor enable this track, we would obviously hear that delay. Let's just go ahead and kill our sense for a moment over here. Go ahead and monitor. Now, now you, you can hear we have this slap because I have a 1024 device block size settings. So let's go ahead and disable that. If we head into our options here, which are in the top left of our range window, we have this option, monitoring mutes playback. In order to essentially disable software monitoring in Studio One, you want to make sure that this is deselected. When this is deselected and we record enable a track in Studio One, you'll notice that it's coming through in terms of it's showing up on the meters, but we're not hearing anything. We don't have anything coming through the main outs. If I was to go ahead and, and enable, enable our monitors, monitors now, now you see, see we, we have it coming through the main outs and we have that flange or that flaming, that latency of those two signals playing over top of each other. Click our monitor button. Now essentially what we can do in Studio One is the exact same thing. We could monitor entirely through our universal control application. And of course, our DAW playback will be coming through on this fader in universal control. 
Now, one last thing to touch on really quickly here is that regardless of which DAW you're using, at any given point in time, if we decide that we want to print the effects that we're monitoring through, we can click this gear icon and we can use the pre-send or post-send. So when we're using the pre-send, we're simply monitoring through any fat channel controls that we have. So for example, I can engage the CQ. You're not gonna hear this now, but I'm hearing this because I'm monitoring through this. But if I wanted to actually record this and pass this on so that it's printed, I can just click the post send. Now, when I click the post send, any EQ changes that I make in terms of either boosting or cutting, these will actually render into the audio file so that you can print these effects regardless of which DAW you're working with. Click the pre-send tab and now these effects are simply being used for monitoring but not printing. So just to recap, at any given point in time on a per channel basis, we can print the fat channel effects that we're using simply by clicking this post send option. Clicking pre-send means that we're only monitoring through those effects. And of course, when we're working with universal control, that we also have our built-in reverb and our built-in delay so that we can dial up these effects. And it's worth mentioning that these would be monitoring only. So for example, you would just simply click this main tab and then we could adjust our effects levels in terms of our reverb and our delay. Now I currently have these muted just because it's a little bit distracting when I'm doing the voiceover. But this is the basic concept. We can use this universal control application to set up all of our mixes across all of our inputs. And then we can use these individual mixes. And I currently have my ADATs enabled just to show you how many different mixes we could potentially be managing through this low latency software monitoring application. And of course, we can be sending this to our DAW of choice, and we have the choice to either monitor by clicking the pre-send or print by clicking the post-send options that we have available on a per-channel basis in Universal Control.